to encapsulate your nightmares. How I won my bat. I guess you're admiring my swing, right? And you're admiring the baseball bat that I'm holding. Maybe you're wondering how I got this bat. Well, there's a story behind it, that's for sure. I was the power hitter on my junior high's baseball team. Our team went to the state finals every year and I was the star. You could read about me in the local paper all the time. Michael Burns, he's got the power. Michael Burns wins it for Linfield, again. That's me, Michael Burns. But now I wish I'd never even touched a baseball bat. Things are different now. I'm different. How much time has gone by since the afternoon that changed my life? I'm not sure, but I can remember everything that happened as if it were yesterday. Baseball practice. We had just finished doing our warm-up exercises on the field. Coach Manning called out. Hey Mike, you're up at the bat. At the games, I always batted cleanup. Fourth in the lineup. That made sense. I was the best. But this was only practice, and the coach liked to shuffle us around to keep us on our toes. I felt all my muscles go tight as I stepped up to the plate. You see, I had a problem, a big problem. I was in a real batting slump. The last game we played, I struck out four times. And the past batting practices, Jimmy the pitcher would lob me the ball and I'd choke, swinging with everything I had as if they were fastballs. Some power hitter, huh? I couldn't even connect. And everyone knew it. I was afraid my new nickname was going to be Swing and Miss Mike. Come on, Mike. Coach Manning called as I took practice swings. Concentrate now. You know tomorrow's game with Lakefield is for the first place. Yeah, Mike. Don't mess this up. Jimmy muttered from the pitcher's mound. I hunched over the plate. The bat just didn't feel right. It felt heavy. Too heavy. Relax, I told myself. Just relax and everything will be fine. The pitch came in. High. I let it go. Strike! Ron called from behind me. I turned to him. Since when does the catcher make calls? Since when does the power hitter strike out every time he shot back? Well, that did it. No way I could relax after that crack. I tried to get my old swing back, but the bat felt even heavier, and I could see my teammates shaking their heads. After about 10 minutes of batting practice, where the best I could do was a little dribble right to the pitcher, the coach called in somebody else. Listen, Mike, he said, putting his arm around my shoulder. Why don't you go home and get some rest for tomorrow's game? I just thought he was being nice, but then he added in a really sharp voice. You'd better shape up, kid. This game is for all the marbles. I trudged off the field, feeling lower than a grounded third. Hey, Mike, hold up a second. I recognised the guy jogging toward me. It was Tom Scott, a local TV reporter. School sports are a big deal in Linfield, but a TV reporter covering a practice? Wow! Feeling okay, Mike? He asked me. Are you doing anything to shake this slump? I'm trying, I mumbled, feeling my face turn red. Really? I hurried into the locker room, feeling really embarrassed. I showered and dressed in a hurry. I wanted to get out of there before the team finished practice. I knew I couldn't stand all the teasing that I'd get. A few minutes later, I stepped back outside and started towards the bike rack. I had my eyes on the ground and I was deep in my unhappy thoughts. I would give anything to get out of this slump, I muttered to myself. I didn't even see the strange looking little man until I nearly tripped over him. Oops, sorry, I muttered. He smiled at me. I heard what you said. You just need a light of bat, he said. Huh? I squinted at him, startled. The man wore a heavy black wool suit. He had a tiny round head, completely bald, and his skin was so pale, he looked like a light bulb. Had the sky ever been outdoors? What did you say? I asked him. You need a light of bat, he repeated. His eyes were silvery. They crinkled as his grin grew wider. I saw for the first time that he held a baseball bat in one hand. He raised it so that I could see it better. It was shiny black wood. It had tape wrapped around the end. It looked as if it had been used before. It's very light and very powerful, the man said. He let out a strange cackle as if he just told a joke. (laughs) Who are you? I stammered, staring at the bat. I'm a sports fan, he said. With his free hand, he reached into his suit jacket pocket. He pulled out a business card and handed it to me. It read, Mr. Smith, Director, Linfield Sports Museum. I handed the card back to him. I stared at the bat. 
You want me to sell this bat? He let out another cackle. He shook his shiny bald head. I'll give it to you, Mike. His strange silver eyes glowed excitedly. Had I told him my name? It's a very good bat. You'll like it, he said. Very powerful. The bat didn't look very special to me. You want to give it to me? He nodded. Yep, take it. Now, you just have to make one promise. Ah, oh, I knew there'd be a catch. What promise? I asked. Clouds rolled over the sun and the air turned cold. I felt a chill at the back of my neck. You have to promise you will return the bat to the museum right after the game. You will not change clothes. You will not go home first. You will return it to me at the museum. Understood? He pushed the bat into my hands. He's crazy, I thought. Why am I taking this bat? Am I that desperate to get over my batting slump? Well, yeah. My hands wrapped around the bat. It didn't feel any different from the bat I had used that afternoon. Then a chill passed through my body. Mr. Smith's ice-cold hand gripped my shoulder. Remember, he said. Return the bat right after the game. I nodded and slung the bat over my shoulder. Then I made my way to my bike and pedaled away as fast as I could. The next day was sunny and cool. A perfect day for baseball. The locker room was noisy before the game. All the guys were talking and laughing, but I was sitting quietly, trying to psych myself up. Hey Mike, Jimmy called, tossing me a water bottle. We're behind you all the way. We're counting on you, man. Yeah, Ron gave me the thumbs up. We know you won't let us down. I felt so nervous. The water bottle nearly slipped out of my hand. I took a long swig of water. I can't strike out, I told myself. I won't strike out. And then it was time. We were up at bat. In the dugout, Coach Manning called everyone to gather around for the new batting order. I've made some changes, he began, staring right at me. I knew what the coach meant, and so did everyone else. He was moving me from the clean-up spot. Ron will bat fourth, he said, and Mike will bat second. Second? I could deal with that. I'd be able to show everyone that much sooner that I was still a winner. Rick, the first guy at bat, hit a single. My turn at the plate. I can't watch this. I heard Jimmy groan to Ron. I picked up my new bat. All of a sudden, it felt really light, just as the strange little man had said. I carried it to the home plate and took my stance. This is weird, I thought. The bat started to tingle. Suddenly, I felt tiny vibrations all the way to my toes. The pitch came low and outside. Strike, called the umpire. I let the second pitch go too. Strike again. I had to swing at the next one, no matter what. The bat tingled and vibrated in my hands. The pitch was a fastball. I sucked in my breath and swung, trying to stay in control. Crack! The ball sailed high into the air. I shaded my eyes as I ran to first, but the ball flew so high I couldn't see it. Was it going to go over the fence for a home run? It was! It worked! I shouted gleefully. The bat actually worked! I jogged to second, my arms held high above my head in a victory sign. The third base coach was grinning, waving me along. My teammates charged over as I rounded third, cheering and thumping me on the back. Then I came home. Linfield two. Two runs batted in for me. The next inning I hit an even higher home run. Two innings later, I came to bat twice and hit two more home runs. That's the way it went every time I went to bat. I pounded out homer after homer. By the time I hit my seventh, the crowd was going ballistic. Seven home runs broke the school record, and then when I hit my ninth, that broke the state record. The final score, Linfield 19, Lakeland 3. Not shabby, not shabby at all. Afterward, a crowd of people swarmed around me. Jimmy and Ron hoisted me up on their shoulders, and Tom Scott, the TV guy, asked me questions while camera crews and photographers took pictures. Hey, Mike, Ron waved me over after everything settled down. We're all going down to Pat's Pizza's place you know, to celebrate, so come on man, you're the star. I hopped on my bike, lead the way, I cried, so excited about the game, I thought I might burst. We rode off, still in our uniforms, the whole team was chanting, Mike, 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 Mike. 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 It was a great feeling, but suddenly my heart sank, the bat. I promised to return it right after the game. I had promised to deliver it back to Mr. Smith at the sports museum. I slowed down, letting the other guys pass me by. They were still chanting my name as they disappeared around the corner. Catch up with you later, I called. I didn't know if they heard me or not. But I knew one thing for sure. I couldn't return the bat.
no way, I had to keep it. It was the greatest bat in the world. The bat had hit nine home runs in one game. I couldn't part with it. Promise or no promise, I had to keep it. Standing over my bike, I gripped the bat in my hands, trying to decide what to do. The first thought was to ride home and hide the bat in my room. Mr. Smith didn't know where I lived. Chances are, he would never find me. But no, I decided that wasn't right. I had to go to the museum to tell Mr. Smith the truth, that I had to have the bat. I'll offer to pay him for it. I decided any amount he wants, it's totally worth it. I remembered the address from the business card. It took me a long time to ride my bike there. The museum was in a strange part of town. There was nobody on the streets, no cars, nothing. The museum was a low gray building, not too inviting. I parked my bike beside the entrance, carrying the bat. I stepped inside. What a cool place. I couldn't believe I'd never been there before. The enormous bright room was filled with life-size sports displays. Two players elbowed each other fiercely in the hockey display. The figures were made of wax or something. I couldn't believe their scary expressions. I walked past the tennis display. A young man in tennis whites had his racket up, about to serve to another player. They looked so real. I expected to see the ball fly over the net. I passed two high school basketball players going up for a rebound. Their muscles were straining. I could actually see beads of sweat running down their faces. Cool, I thought, leaning on the bat as I studied the display. So cool. The baseball display was under construction. Part of a diamond has been built, but there were no wax figures playing ball. As I stared at the real looking scene, Mr. Smith appeared from behind it. Hello, Mike, he said, smiling. His bald head shone under the bright display lights. Thanks for returning the bat. I hesitated. I, I, uh, I can't return it, I stammered. His silver eyes narrowed in surprise. What? I have to keep it, I told him. It's the greatest bat in the world. I'll do anything to keep it, Mr. Smith, I pleaded. He rubbed his pale chin. Well, really, I insisted. I really need this bat. I want to keep it forever. Okay, he agreed. You can keep it forever. My mouth fell open. I was stunned. You mean I can just keep it? He nodded, smiling. If that's what you want, he murmured. Let me see a swing, Mike. Take a good swing, okay? I was so happy and grateful I lifted the bat, started to show off my swing and froze in a blinding flash of silver light. And I've been standing here ever since, frozen in place. The bat gripped tightly in my hands, about to take my best swing. A lot of time has passed, I don't really know how much. I stare out at the cardboard backdrop and I prepare to take my swing. People visit the sports museum, they come over to see the baseball display and they stare at me. They talk about how real I look and what a great swing I have. It makes me happy that they like my swing and I guess I have one other thing to be happy about. I get to keep the bat forever. Thank you, Traveller, for being here tonight and letting me be a part of your nightmares. I hope you find your way back real soon.